Ooh, so I know I haven't posted a video in, well, properly in a really long time, but I just thought this experience was so bad not to share it. Um, but yeah, so I, on Saturday, I went to the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert featuring Post Malone. And I post, oh, and I purchased an upgrade, a VIP upgrade. So I left at nine o'clock in the morning and then got there at, uh, I'd say we got there at one and then we we're just messing around Queen Street, you know, we just went to the arcade and then I can't remember where else we went. Oh, we went to the, like, just have a look around Sky City in Auckland. Um, and then we finally went to the Mount Smart Stadium. So on our tickets, it said gate D or skate C or D. And when we showed that to the general bookings office, she said to go to gate B. And I said, it says here to go to gate C or D. Now keep in mind, this was bloody like two, three hours like prior before the show was starting. So check-in wasn't till like 4.45 and we got there at like three o'clock, you know? Um, so yeah, so we're waiting at gate B. The security guard was like really snarky. I just went, hey, so is this where we're supposed to be? Like, so apparently the lady at the general bookings office said we're supposed to go to gate B, but on the ticket it says gate C or D. And then the security guy got really snarky with me. He was with the red badge group. He said, see that big line over there? That's VIP. And he's like, yeah, I know. Surprising, right? And I said, so are we supposed to go to gate B or are we supposed to go to gate C or D? And he's just like, this is supposed to be where you're waiting. So we wait there. And what was it? By this time, we try to get in. They give us our VIP like merchandise and stuff. Forget to give us the gift bag, whatever. Um, and then they said, oh, no, you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be in gate C or D. This is VIP designated stuff. So then I'm just like, well, the security guard just says we're supposed to wait here. And the general bookings office told us to go to gate B. So then we had to walk half an hour all the way to fucking gate C or D, or I, I can't remember. So yeah, when we finally get to gate C, or like gate C, um, I realised that the people waiting in line didn't have any of their like VIP like um, necklaces or anything like that, or lanyards. So I just thought that was a little bit suspicious. So I told my, so the person I went with, I said, I'm going to go C gate, um, we're waiting in gate C, I'm going to go C gate D. And then I notice a big sign that says VIP lounge. And then I ask the lady, I say, are we supposed to be here? Because on our tickets, it says gate C or D. But we've had two people just tell us we're supposed to be in gate, like, we're supposed to be in gate B, and then they lead us back here. It's like, no, we're supposed to be waiting in the VIP lounge. So we get in, we get out of that, like, I get, like, I get the guy I'm going with. We go back, we go all the way to the fucking VIP lounge. And um, we tried to get in, she goes, you're not supposed to get in until you have a wristband. That was a lady at the fucking Red Badge group. Um, so yeah, and then, but I also noticed the people that did have VIP passes didn't actually need wristbands to get in as well. That was only for general admission. So we finally get to the VIP line. We finally get to our thing and it says silver hot seat. And um, the woman, you know, like she's busy serving other people because of the really bad miscommunication and disorganization, VIP staff, uh, fucking the Red Badge group and the fucking Mount Smart General Bookings Office and the volunteers, they're getting conflicting information. No one's communicating with each other. So the lady's like, why did, the, why did the security guard tell you you needed a wristband to get in? You should be able to just show your phone and just walk right in. So we pretty much waited in that line for nothing. Uh, by this time, it had been an hour. So we finally get in. And then, um, yeah, so what was it? We're, we got more conflicting information. We were supposed to be in the lower south side stand. And we got led to the east side stand or whatever. It turns out the south side stand was supposed to be behind it. Now... By, by this time, my phone battery is at 15%. I don't have time. Like, every time I pull up to show my tickets to everyone, my phone battery is, like, dying, like, rapidly. So we finally get to the VIP. We're waiting at the front. 
and then I show them my silver hot seat and I accidentally didn't show them my VIP because no one's asking for me to show my VIP. They're just asking me to show the receipt that I'm getting. But unfortunately, the VIP pass is also like it's on a like it's saved in my wallet. But like like people aren't asking like to see that. They're asking to see the piece of paper that says silver hot seat. Um, so the lady was actually really nice there. She said, oh, have you um, gone to the meet and greet yet? And I went, no. And then the person I go with, um, my fucking ex, he says, oh, we're supposed to be in silver hot seat. So she takes that. I can't show proof of that because my phone battery's dying and I kind of wanted photos and videos. I didn't get a lot of videos or photos. She goes, oh, you're actually supposed to be in, um, you're supposed to be in those blue seats over there. So yeah. So I wasted $840.30 so my ex could say, oh no, we're only in silver, we're only in silver seats, despite telling him we got fucking VIP tickets. So yeah, that's another reason why he's my ex. Um, there's also been another incident where I booked us tickets to go to Queenstown together, which is in the South Island, and then he told me to book those tickets, and at the last minute he says he can't go. Like a week prior and I can't refund those tickets either he didn't say not to spend it yet he said he felt pressured bullshit you know like it's just like I, I so you felt pressured and I just spent two hundred dollars for nothing like, for, oh no actually I spent four hundred dollars for nothing it's only two hundred dollars in the summer but you know that's it's another fucking different story he's a piece of shit um so yeah and then we are in the silver hot seats and these people took our seats and then we had to take other seats and then we we're taking other people's seats and the security guard had to tell us or the volunteer had to tell us that we're actually in this seat and these cunts actually took our seats so they kind of just I don't know like they're a bunch of crackheads and then they had to like get up and leave so whatever regardless I still had a really good time like Post Malone honestly was like the best part it was I'm really fucking annoyed that I'm still paying off that $840 despite being denied entry into VIP as well and just like having no fucking battery to show proof of that. Um, it was so fucking disorganized. Um, yeah, and then Red Hot Chili Peppers, I was kind of glad they finished early and I kind of wasn't glad they were because I actually had to go to work the next day and Auckland is like a three or four hour drive depending on how fast you drive. Um, so yeah, like, the gig didn't start till, like, 6.45, Post Malone was the opening act, was, like, I always thought his music was okay and he was overrated, but when you actually saw him live in concert, like, his, his fucking on-stage presence was just amazing, um, yeah, and then now I've been listening to Post Malone at week ever since, um, for the last, oh, I don't know, um, I left Saturday, so I've been listening to Post Malone for the last three days on my, like, work playlist, um, but yeah, and then when we saw Red Hot Chili Peppers, they were playing like a bunch of, like 80% of their songs were like fucking just new songs and no one could really sing along to it. It was kind of weird. Um, they only played like four of their most famous songs. A lot of us were really disappointed that he didn't play Under the Bridge because that's, that's kind of like a Kiwi classic. That's a New Zealand, it's like kind of like a New Zealand national anthem by now, like everyone and their mother knows how to play under the bridge it's it's kind of like wonderwall in america so we're a little bit just um, a lot of us were pretty disappointed in that um so yeah the red hot chili peppers didn't like um get until so it finished at 10 so so yeah they didn't open until like an hour later so seven o'clock and then they finished at like 10 o'clock but keep in mind like F Fleabag was playing for like three hours straight like this guy did not take a break like at all um there was another guitarist I can't remember who it was but yeah um overall it's like it, it, it was a good experience because at least I went like I mean I like Post Malone's definitely made a new fan but I'm honestly really disappointed that I paid so much money for VIP for the VIP upgrade and I didn't even get into the VIP and it was supposed to be like and my ex was complaining about how he didn't have enough battery on his phone I'm like you fucking idiot we paid for VIP we could have got in there we got we could have got 90 minutes of canapes we could have got to a photo booth and you could have charged your phone you fucking idiot 
So yeah, and then he and he, he still won't take responsibility for it, even though like the, the lady clearly said we had access, and he's just like, oh, but it was just so confusing and it was just so conflicting. He's like, when someone says you have access to the VIP lounge, who are you to fucking dispute that? Like, you know, oh, but whatever. Like it's it's done. Had a really good time at the concert. I was not the only person that was led to the wrong place on the silver seats as well, or VIP. Apparently people in general admission had a way easier time than us. Um, but yeah, it was just a shit show. So, like, people in VIP were being led to, like, four different gates. Keep in mind, these gates are, like, fucking half an hour, like, a half hour walk apart. It's, like, really hot. It's bloody, like, I don't know, when we went there, it was, like, 25 27 degrees i don't know how much that is in fahrenheit but it was fucking hot um but yeah and then so the show was outside um i don't know like red, red hot chili peppers had a bunch of visual effects for that um post malone actually had like fire like flames coming out he had like, fireworks and stuff um, but yeah, I, I tried to email Ticketmaster to say what's happened. I'm still waiting for a response for them. Um, and yeah, like, honestly, I, I've also read the reviews for the Red Badge group. They're not good reviews from their workers or from anybody. Like, they're getting, like, one star. So I have no idea how on earth they, like, these people hired them. Um, but yeah, like, that's just my story. I hope this doesn't happen to anyone else. Like, I know that they're still touring. Like you know, in like news, like in Dunedin and in Australia and all that stuff. But honestly, like I was, that was like the first VIP experience I've ever had, and that was just for a concert, and that was just so fucking disappointing, you know. Um, actually, I think that's like the first VIP experience like ever, and I didn't even get an experience. So yeah, just thought I'd have a little bitch and a rant. Um, and yeah, see you later. <laughs>